Have you got grout issues in your house? Well, I'm Lisa from Active Domestics and today I'm going to talk all things grout. I'm going to tell you why grout gets dirty in the first place. And then we're going to look at the best tools to clean the grout with and the products that you need to avoid using. And that includes some natural products as well as some store-bought products that aren't good for cleaning grout. Now also, I'm going to demonstrate how to clean dirty grout. And then I'm going to show you how you can keep your grout clean with minimal effort, no harsh chemicals and no scrubbing. At the very end, we're going to just go over just a couple of things that you need to consider when you're choosing tiles and grout if you're in a position to actually be updating your bathroom. There's a couple of reasons why grout gets dirty so easily and can be quite difficult to keep clean. But first of all, we have to think about what grout is and what its job is. Most commonly, grout is a cement-like type of material that is um, there to fill in the gaps between the tiles, fills those gaps and stops the water going into those um, in behind the tiles. Because of course, if the water did get in behind the tiles, um, you'd get mold in there and that could cause a lot of issues because mold can cause structural problems. Unlike tiles that most commonly have a smooth and glossy surface, the grout is quite rough. And that can be a little bit harder to clean and dirt can sort of get stuck in those little rough bits. In addition, the grout can often be a little bit indented into the tiles. So of course, that's gonna provide a little ledge for that dirt and grime and soap scum and excess product to be captured and cause dark areas like here. But anyway, I'm going to show you some of the equipment that I would use to clean the grout. Many people, when cleaning their grout, think about getting an old toothbrush to do the job. But think about it, that's a really small surface area. In comparison, this here is a well-used, specific grout cleaning brush. You can see it's got much harder bristles and it's also got a much larger surface area than the standard toothbrush. So it's going to get the job done faster. You might think about using a brush like this. Um, that does the job just as well also. You've seen those machines that you can buy that have these little things in and they vibrate and stuff like that. I seriously think they're a total waste of money because Look at this, even though that's specifically designed to get into the grout, it's going to take you blinking forever because, and unless you have trouble making that motion in your arm, then what good is the vibration actually doing? You still have to move your arm and move the machine around. So it's really just a brush. A brush is fine. It's all you need. Whatever tool you're using, it's going to need to be wet because when you're cleaning, you need a mixture of water, the cleaning product, plus the agitation, which is the motion that you're going to give it. Now, it's important to choose your products quite well when you're cleaning bathrooms and kitchens and place like that because you're usually going to be using the same product to clean the tiles as well as the grout. So, you know, you want to avoid bleach, bleach based products. It can cause a lot of problems to your own health and you can also um, cause a bit of damage around the area. For example, if you use bleach on um, tiles that are made out of natural marble or natural stone, it can etch away at the um, actual tiles. Bleach by nature is a corrosive product and so it can actually disintegrate the quality of the grout. And you know, then, then you might end up getting moisture getting in behind the tiles and you don't want that. The same can be said for using um, natural acidic products like um, vinegar. Vinegar is also a very acidic product and that can also over time 
possibly cause some damage to your tiles if they're made out of natural stone or it could also cause some damage to the actual um, grout product so you know you just don't use extreme things when I've got problematic grout like you can see here can you see that quite clearly Eden? can you see how there's a lot of buildup in this grout in the shower even though in this bathroom it's got lovely large tiles and the grout is the grout line is actually quite skinny and minimal, the buildup still occurs and you can easily get rid of that by just getting, this is just a bit of home brand um, cream cleanser, very cheap, very easy to get and so I don't spill it everywhere. <clears throat> I'm just going to get into there and give it a good old scrub. <clears throat> now the aim is that we want to get that grout clean and then keep it clean without too much scrubbing because you don't want to always scrub it and use harsh chemicals because that could actually degrade the, um, the actual grout. We don't want to do that. But you can see it's going to take a bit of time in this bathroom because the grout is quite dirty, but it's going to come up. The other thing that we could use This is working really well actually. I'm going to need a little bit more water on that. Remember the, the grout also in between here too needs a more attention. Anyway. I'm going to keep going with this a little later, but I'm going to show you how, e of course, it's really easy to uh, rinse things off in a bathroom like this. <clears throat> because remember, the rinsing is really important. The cleaning is very important, but the rinsing is really important too, because you want to get rid of all of that excess product. Otherwise, that's also going to cause a bit of staining. need more attention <laughs> which is why you don't want to let it build up too much it's much easier just to keep it looking clean in the first place but anyway we'll go back to the other bathroom and talk about that <laughs> of course you're always going to have a towel down there to walk out onto for your safety so you do not slip now I'm going to share with you the cold hard truth as to why your grout is getting so dirty in the first place and that is, is because you're probably not cleaning it very often. Most people, when they're cleaning the um, tiles, just gloss over everything like this. How's that cleaning the grout? Because we've already um, discussed how the grout is indented. This bathroom being the oldest bathroom in the house still looks so great and the, t and the grout still looks great is because when I'm cleaning it, I'm actually getting into the grout lines as I'm cleaning on a regular basis. So that really prevents buildup. Yes, it's going to take a bit of time, but basically you want to just be structured about it. Do one line, get the others, go down like this so that you don't miss anything. And then go down the, um, the vertical ones. <clears throat> They're easier, of course. <laughs> Using my finger to get into those grout lines as I'm cleaning those areas. By doing that, I'm... This is the best way to maintain it because you're avoiding the use of harsh chemicals. You're not using any, you're not using any harsh scrubbers because you don't need to if you just maintain them and what and really wash carefully in between the grout lines. Now grout, remember, is a very functional product, but it's also it can be a decorative product. 
Oftentimes people will choose grout that's got a similar colour to the colour of the actual tiles so that you've got a more seamless, expansive look, makes things look a bit bigger and stuff like that. Sometimes people choose a contrasting colour grout to the actual tiles in order to make the tiles and the shape of the tiles stand out and give it a more decorative um, statement kind of look. Do remember that the smaller the tiles, the more grout that you're going to have to attend to. Of course, the larger the tiles, the less grout you're going to have to clean. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about getting those little tiny wee subway tiles.